The Daniel fast is a partial fast based on two accounts of fasting by the prophet Daniel. It is intended to be a time of drawing closer to God when done as a fast. The Daniel fast, or more accurately, the Daniel diet, has also gained popularity as a healthy eating plan. In either case, the fast typically lasts between 10 and 21 days. Some people incorporate the food plan's principles into their daily diet. The Daniel fast is named after the way the prophet Daniel is said to have eaten in Daniel 1 and Daniel 10. When Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and other young Israelite men were drafted into Nebuchadnezzar's service, they were to be fed and drunk from the king's table while undergoing a three-year training program. It wasn't long before Daniel was given his first chance to follow God in the midst of a pagan culture. He resolved not to defile himself with the king's food. This decision was made to avoid violating Moses' law regarding the foods that Jews were not permitted to eat. For example, the law explicitly stated that they could not eat foods offered to idols. Exodus 34.15 Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of this sacrifice. Despite the fact that he was serving a pagan king, Daniel resolved not to disobey God. Daniel's desire not to defile himself was fraught with danger. Daniel 1, 8-21 But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom and Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Later, during Cyrus's reign, Daniel had a terrifying vision. He humbled himself before God once more by fasting. Daniel 10, 1-12 In the third year of King Cyrus of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left, my face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you, 
and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. For Daniel, the fast was a time of mourning, as well as a way for him to set his mind to gain understanding and to humble himself before his God. Because the Daniel fast is based solely on Daniel's eating pattern, which is not elaborated on in the Bible, different resources have different rules for what can and cannot be consumed while fasting. In general, the eating plan is similar to a vegan diet, but with more restrictions. Sweeteners, added sugar and natural sweeteners like honey or agave, solid fats, yeast, caffeine, alcohol, additives, and processed foods are all prohibited, as are all meat and animal products, meat, eggs, fish, dairy, vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and water are all part of the Daniel fast. These rules are based on Daniel's request to eat nothing but vegetables and water, Daniel 1.12, and to consume no choice food, no meat or wine, Daniel 10.3. The Hebrew word for vegetables is sometimes translated as pulses, and it is thought to refer to seed-derived food. Sugar and sweeteners are seen as examples of choice food. Those adhering to the Daniel fast are not restricted in the number of approved foods they can consume. That being said, one of the spiritual benefits of fasting is spending less time with food and more time focused on God. The goal of fasting is to deny the flesh and be reminded of our need for God, as well as to draw closer to Him. Those who use a Daniel fast primarily as a healthy eating program frequently find unprocessed food to be more satiating and thus eat less naturally. The medical community appears to agree that the Daniel fast is tolerable and may provide some health benefits to people as the Daniel fast has gained popularity in culture. It is important for believers to care for their bodies. In discussing sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, What? Know ye that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Our bodies in the end belong to God. We should steward them wisely, including taking care of our physical health. A Daniel fast can be a spiritually beneficial way to focus on God. Changing our habits and relying less on the comforts of food can serve as a physical reminder of how much we rely on God. True fulfillment can only be found in Him. Those who wish to use the Daniel fast in this manner should be certain of their motivations and take steps to use the fast in a spiritually beneficial manner. Spend more time with God in prayer and reading His Word, for example, while fasting. Also, make sure to plan ahead of time for the dietary changes. Without proper preparation, the Daniel fast may become an obsession with food rather than a tool for spiritual growth, especially in cultures where fad diets abound and processed or prepared foods are popular. There are numerous resources available online and in print to assist people in completing a Daniel fast. Before you begin, pray for God's wisdom and then trust Him to guide you along the way.